Hey, it's me, Marty Leonard's live backstage at Lollapalooza. And uh, boy, I'm here with uh, one of the members of Radiohead, guitarist Ed O'Brien. Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here. It's it's very nice to be here. We haven't been. Uh, we've had about three weeks off from the touring, and it's our first day at the second leg in America. So it's good. It feels good to be here. And what a nice place to uh, to kick it off right here in Chicago. Fabulous. At the scene of your show uh, that happened here in Hutchinson Field. Yep. In 2001. Yep. And uh, what a triumphant show that was. <laughs> it's a show that people still talk about here in Chicago. It's become a legendary show. Really? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Well, that's and, good. And I'm, I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, but that show actually opened the gates to Lollapalooza. The city, for many, many years, would not allow big rock concerts in this uh, park. Okay. And, uh, and because they went off so well, yeah. Lollapalooza then came in a few years later, and uh, the rest of the history, and here you are tonight. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's that feels nice. Is it? Was it? Is it Mayor Daly? Is he the guy who's in charge of it? Is mayor it? Daly actually is the mayor here. Yes. Yeah. And is he the guy who says yay or nay? He puts his big thumb up and yeah, he okay. says yes if it's gonna. <laughs> if he wants it to happen. Yeah. It kind of happens. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so so, tell us about uh, your your memories of playing on that night, and. Um, and what it was like for you to play in a, in a city center like this? It's, um, I remember it was hot like it was. I mean, Chicago, I guess, is, it's humid and hot in the summer. Um, and there's something great about, you know, doing a gig in a city center where you don't, you know, you can walk from, from a bar. You don't have to get in a car. That you might get on a bus or whatever. Or do you have a metro here as a subway? Oh yes, we do. Public sure. transportation. We're urging people to take public transportation. Nice, a good. Lot of this good. Weekend, so, that, so that's ideal. And there's something nice about doing a gig with a backdrop of the city. You know, it's 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 you know, it's it's a it's it creates a good atmosphere. You know, it's very it's very picturesque. The lights go down. The sky straight, the skyscrapers twinkle. All right, and, and here the backdrop, not only the buildings of the skyline, but then you have the lake, the lake just course. on the other side. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really an ideal spot. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's well, nice. there's so much anticipation about your show tonight. I mean, that's really, like I said, people were talking about the old show. They're really talking about the show tonight. Okay. And uh, tonight is sold out. 75,000 people will be here. And you're playing uh, a standalone show. No one else is playing. You're, right. you're it. So what do you have planned for us tonight? Well, we're going to play all the new songs off In Rainbows. That's what we've been doing, which is, I think one of the really good things about this tour, I was chatting about this the other day, was that we've, we've now been touring this for about three months, and we've only got another month and a half to go. But what the reaction that we've been getting from people is, and it's been the first time for a while that people have actually, they actually really want to hear the new songs more than they want to hear Karma Police or Idiotech or... or uh, or Paranoid Android, there's a real sense of, you know, when we play one of the new songs, the cheer goes up. So, um, that's been a while. <laughs> well, I, well, I, th I think we, we uh, actually found that out on the last tour because you did debut many of the songs yeah. on that tour. We saw you at Bonnaroo and that's also right. here in Chicago at yeah, yeah. the uh, Auditorium Theater. And it was interesting then because those songs were so new yeah. and they have changed a bit. Yeah. They've changed, yeah, they have changed a bit. Inevitably, you know, when we, when we, did, that, when we did that tour two years ago, we, um, we basically went straight off the, off the road and into the studio and basically put down on tape, uh, and it was tape, not a hard disk, on tape, uh, what we've been playing live. And it didn't work. And we knew that, you know, that the, the good thing about that tour was that it... it, it two years ago is that we had the opportunity to play new material but the problem was that we've got such a sort of partisan audience that, who seem to be hungry to hear new stuff that, that they're not discerning in kind of like so you know the arrangement not be right but they go way so you go oh that must be good you know so uh, <laughs> you know our audience are brilliant but they're not the best critics of our material you know and and it was evident when we got back in the studio, we put it down on tape, and it's like, oh, hang on a sec, that's not right. So, I mean, there are a few body snatches is pretty much the same. House of Cards is pretty much the same. Um, Fifteen Step is, is actually the same, but, but things like arpeggio and stuff are, 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 are different and, uh, you know, so yeah, there's yeah. and Jigsaw. Well, a song from the last tour that, that seemed to be a, a real favorite among fans uh, was Bangers and Mash. Yeah. But that didn't make it to the album. No, well, you know, it's one of those things. It's like it, when, you, when we track listed the record, 
it was uh, it's a tough call you know it's like picking your best 11 and you're not it's like it is I mean the others are going to crucify me for using a soccer analogy because I'm a bit of a soccer nut I love football but it is like you know it's not necessarily the best 11 songs that go on a record it's the best songs that fit together so it's like a team they've got to and we tried you know and the down is a new up was another one that didn't make it and we did our best to you know to put them on there but it just didn't work and um so we put the 11 on the record and then of course we got by we we, we got on with it and and did the uh did the box the limited edition so they, they they're out there and people know them we're talking with ed o'brien of radiohead just uh, hours before uh, Radiohead set here at Lollapalooza. I want to ask you one more question about the album in Rainbows when you released that in, in somewhat of an unconventional way by making it available to people if they wanted to pay for it or not. And then it was released as, as an album in January. But now here we are, you know, months and months and months after, after the initial release. Um, was it a success, the way, the way, the way that, uh, that you rolled it out? Well, it's interesting because we've been talking about this and, and, you know, it was a complete success. And it wasn't, and we're not measuring it just solely. I mean, people tend to measure success now terms, in terms of, you know, how financial, it's, it's a financial thing, how successful it is. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a success financially. It wasn't as successful as if, you know, we had the opportunity to sign for a major and get an advance for 20 million, you know, pounds on, on a record, on that record. But the, the successful thing about it was that it breathed new life into us. And it... The, the, the most important thing for us is that we actually measure success by how much creativity, you know, whether we can keep the creativity bubbling over. If we'd taken that 20 million advance from a major record company, I think those kind of things kill you creatively. So it was a complete and utter success because, you know, we see a future now uh, of how we can proceed. It's incredibly empowering. And, uh, you know, and it, yeah, and, 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 it was it was it was just so exciting i i can't sort of overstress how brilliant it was to be you know having a meeting on that friday the day before the monday we announced it and i remember seeing in the a, a music publication in the uk and they they penciled in a radiohead release scheduled for 2008 april and knowing that we were going to drop this thing and not quite knowing what the effect would be but knowing that well you know we've got some fans who want to hear it um, and they know nothing about it. You know, we couldn't. We 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 sat on this thing for about three months throughout last summer. Couldn't tell our friends. I mean, I only told my wife. We didn't tell the rest of our families. You know, and and to sit on this thing and then just just to sort of Johnny post a little message on the message board on our message board on the Monday morning, and it was just like it was like a wildfire that spread. And it was those kind of things are so empowering. You know, you don't. You know, it was there, were, there was there was a core group of us. There was the band, the management, and you know, and our and our uh, the people who who do our merchandise and the, the who distributed waste, and uh, our publicist, and that was it. So there was a core group about nine of us having these meetings, and you know, there wasn't a big bureaucracy to deal with. It was it was brilliant. It's what it should be about. It was it's rock and roll. I mean, that is rock and roll. It certainly is. And and uh, you guys have always done everything the way you wanted to do it, anyways. Yeah, we've been very lucky. I mean, you know, we're talking about on Creep, you go back to Creep. Creep meant that, you know, although we were sort of, we got pissed off with it, it gave us, because it meant that on our first record we recouped, which means you don't owe the record company any money, it meant that they weren't breathing down our necks so we could make the bends without very little interference, which then led on to OK Computer, which led on to Kid A. So, you know, we've been very lucky. Yes, you have. And so if we to have such great music from you guys. So uh, I know you're, you're going to go on stage in just a little bit, so I want to thank you for stopping by today. Hey. And uh, have a great show, and Thanks we can't wait to see it. That's great. Thanks for the kind words. And, sure. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to this one. It's, uh, you know, it looks, it looks quite big. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Ed O'Brien of Radiohead, I'm Marty Leonard. It's uh, live backstage at Lollapalooza here on 93XRT.